Good morning. Linda Hoffman will be in the narthex selling gift cards to benefit New Life Center on July 14 and 28. Why am I telling you that on July 7? Well, so you can bring your cash, your checkbook, your piggy bank, so you can purchase some gift cards. Linda will be letting us know about the dates upcoming in August as soon as possible, but make sure that you have your, your cash ready to go to buy some gift cards next Sunday. Don't forget that favorite hymn barrel. Uh, some hymnals, some slips and everything are out in the narthex to make your request known. Let's fill it up and have a great month of singing. On page four of your order of worship today, you will see that there is an upcoming Social Justice Summer Film Festival. That's a big old title, isn't it? And it's coming up beginning all the Fridays, beginning uh, July 19th, and continuing until the last Friday of August. <clears throat> After each film, there will be a discussion about what the Church of the Palms might already be doing, or the opportunities that might lie ahead as we are challenged by those films. Showtime is 1 p.m. in the boardroom, plan to attend, and where there's free popcorn, why would you not? Amen. All right? So all of the titles and the upcoming uh, subject matter is listed there on page four. And with that, I would love to invite Nancy Nonini. Where did that girl go? She's all the way in the back. She's waving her hands. She must be in the spirit. And she's going to talk to us about... Camp Genesis. Good morning. Greetings from Camp Genesis. I had the opportunity to spend a few days with the kids at Camp Genesis this past week. Kids who have been impacted by our criminal justice system by being separated from a family member due to incarceration. I must say that I did not see any tears when the kids got their backpacks at the beginning of camp. Some with cards that said a stranger had been praying for them for the past year. They were more interested in what was in the backpack, some of the things we donated, like sunglasses, water bottles, card games, sunscreen, etc. But as the week went on, the kids began to feel more comfortable expressing their feelings. Asked what they were thankful for. One child said being able to see his dad the week before. During the prayer stations one night, I had the sidewalk chalk area, it was easy. <laughs> What so many expressed was grief. Some drew pictures of a lost pet, a lost friend, or a lost loved one. But a lot were about the loss of the relationship with their loved one. I feel confident that even though the kids did not cry when they initially opened the cards with the prayer hearts, they do go to those hearts when they are hurting, recognizing that someone is intervening with God for them. So if you signed up for one of the children to pray for one of the children, Please pick up your child's heart in the narthex after the service. Even if you have not signed up before, you can take a heart and start praying for a child for the next year. Let us be the church for these children who are suffering through no fault of their own. Thanks. Welcome to the Church of the Palms. Part of the United Church of Christ, you've met Pastor Jim. I'm Pastor Paul. Jen is in Italy with Matteo and having the time of her life. We... We're glad for that, but we have Elaine helping us with music today, so we're grateful for that. Yes, indeed. Martin is our uh, liturgist. Marshall will be singing with Anne's playing. It'll, it's a good Sunday to be in church. Special welcome to our LGBTQ plus siblings and all allies who are tired of hate. This is a safe place for you and me to be our authentic selves and be the church. Today, Jesus sends uh, the disciples out to be the church. Yes. Yes. Sure. All right, that's, that's the gospel right there, yes. 
Uh, today, Jesus sends the disciples out to be the church, telling them to leave their luggage at the train station. Those weren't his exact words, but it was about that. Um, don't take it on your journey. Have you noticed we take and drag along a lot of emotional baggage as we travel? We're invited today to let go of our baggage and start our journey. If you're watching us online, we extend our welcome and blessings to you. If this is the first time you're with us in person, God bless you. We don't always take ourselves seriously, but we do take seriously God and God's call upon each and every life. We're grateful that you have joined us today to be the church, the palms of Jesus. Let's worship God together.
Thank you, Elaine. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in our call to worship. How great is our God. God soars above our poor intellects like a snow-capped mountain over a sun-baked desert. Here's the profound theories. Please. God shatters the assembled might of world governments as an earthquake levels a city. Consider with me the greatness of our God. Measure God's judgments. Embrace God's eternal love. Please join us in our opening hymn. reading section of worship, we present different quotes from a variety of people and perspectives. Some of the people you might be familiar with, others not so much. All have wisdom for us. Charles de Gaulle was a French army officer and statesman who led the free French forces against Nazi Germany during World War II and shared the provisional government of the French Republic from 1944 to 1946 to restore democracy in France. He was elected president of France and served from 1959 to 1969. He said, patriotism is when love of your own people comes first. Nationalism is when hate for other people than your own comes first. 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama said, we the people recognize that we have responsibilities as well as rights, that our destinies are bound together, that a freedom which only asks what's in it for me, a freedom without a commitment to others, a freedom without love or charity or duty or patriotism is unworthy of our founding ideals and those who died in their defense. Sunny legendary ancient Chinese philosopher, author of the Tao, Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu wrote, when a nation is filled with strife, then do patriots flourish. John Kerry is an American attorney, politician, and diplomat who served as the 68th United States Secretary of State. He said, I saw courage both in the Vietnam War and in the struggle to stop it. I learned that patriotism includes protest, not just military service. 
And finally, Bell Hooks was an American author, educator, and social critic. She served as the distinguished professor in residence at Berea College. She said, for me, forgiveness and compassion are always linked. How do we hold people accountable for wrongdoing and yet at the same time remain in touch with their humanity enough to believe in their capacity to be transformed? Don't worry, Pastor Jim, I haven't forgotten. In three weeks, Pastor Jim turns 60. <laughs> and
And we celebrate that advanced age, and we've been telling realities of his old, old age. We've already learned that he is, uh, well, so old that when he was a kid, the Dead Sea was only sick. That, that he is so old that when he goes to the doctor, he goes to the archaeologist. Well, this week we find out that Pastor Jim is so old. How old is he? He's so old that he stopped looking for the meaning of life and started looking for car keys and cell phone and glasses. <laughs> Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Mark, and uh, I'll be reading uh, verses 7 through 10 and then verse 13. Jesus went about the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to not put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the things with which we struggle is concerning our purpose in the moment, the presence. What are we supposed to be doing right now, right here in our lives? Like many of us, the disciples had done some good things and some, well, not so good things in the past. But the past, the past was in the past. A few weeks ago, I talked about that it doesn't matter what you wanted to be as a kid. What matters is who we are right here, right now. You see, Jesus is constantly telling us to leave the past behind and journey onward, journey forward. When, when facing new challenges each day, one of the worst things we take along with us is our baggage, our resentments against others, our angers, our worries. I'd like for us to consider this morning limiting our baggage for our new journeys. Releasing our baggage of what the church is supposed to be that we've carried. 10, 20, 50, 70 years. Letting go of our burdens. Letting God be the baggage handler. If we can do that, it can be a wonderful moment. It's so freeing to release something And let go of anxiety. When you live in the moment, juggling baggage doesn't work very well. you got to take God with you. It's the only way I know to find purpose for this day and this time. And understanding our purpose in this time in our life, who we are now, is critical. Judy Green Davis, a former associate pastor right here at this church, was downsizing. And she said in a Bible study that I attended, if you're not going to cook anymore, why are you saving all the pots and pans? Learning to let go of who we were with all our stuff is key to finding our purpose, our travel destination today. Will you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So you're traveling on the road of life. You've had some good moments, some great scenery. I suspect, like me, you've had some bumpy roads, bumpy moments too. Metaphorically, I bet many of us have lost our luggage a time or two on our journeys. Oddly, my challenge today is for us to intentionally lose our luggage. That is, this summer, 
I think we should be intentional, make a conscious effort to leave our bags behind. How many pounds of grudges are we packing around? How many handbags of resentment? How many rolling bags are packed full of revenge are we toting? When the disciples were sent to share the good news, they were sent out in the name of Jesus. And he told them, don't take too much stuff with you. Now, why do you say that? Probably lots of reasons, because when we get too much stuff, we tend to be clingy, mine. We hold on to things that don't matter. We don't live in the moment. We don't live to present day purpose. We get an unhealthy attachment to the past. For 13 years, I lived in a house in Mesa. When we moved from that house, I found boxes that were unopened from the previous move that were so important that I packed them up and shipped them across country. Common issue for us today is a lament is, is downsizing. We have too much stuff, so what do we do? We only take part of our stuff when we get to our new place, and then we realize we still have too much stuff. When traveling uh, via airplane or in life, it's good to travel light. Because if we're honest, we carry more than just our physical stuff. We carry emotional baggage with us each day. We drag it to the store, doctor, while we drive, to church, over to a friend's house. Even walking with the dog or, or driving, we're toting our baggage. And our bags are bursting with old grudges, things of the past that weigh us down each moment in the present. So, our journey with Jesus moves us onward. It starts first with checking in. We got to show our ID. We got to show, and that involves looking at our past. Many driver's license information is based on the past. Hair color, <laughs> weight, even height. When looking back in time, we've held on to. What have we held on to? What have we insisted on carrying with us? The security people at the airport don't care that we once were a different occupation or weight or anything else. They don't care whether or not we've been to Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. The truth and the consequences they are concerned with are our present travel assignments, arrangements, destination, goal. But be careful where you ask God to send you. Be careful what you want because you might get it. And the road may not be as paved and smooth as you like. And what will get us through, what will help, help us get through our emotional baggage check-in? Focus on one word, one word, forgiveness. Oh, well, wait a second, wait a second. There's no mention of forgiveness in that text. That's right. But the weird thing is, hmm, it's not optional when we travel through life. Forgiveness is essential for any journey. So, so put yourself in the shoes of the disciples long ago. Jesus is sending us out today, not who we were 30 years ago, but today. And we can't take all our stuff with us that we relied on. We have to totally trust God that God will help us through each and every situation. God knows that we're imperfect human beings, and, and, and it's hard for us to let go of carefully guarded, well-worn bags of resentment and old hurts. I suspect, like me, each of us, each of you, has names, has faces of individuals we simply cannot imagine being able to forgive or pardon. How can we forgive the one who molested, the ex-spouse who maligned, the murderer who took a loved one? How can we forgive a corporation that used our talents and then discarded us, a 
parent who abandoned us, an adult child who's trying to destroy us. How can we forgive the stupidity, the hatred, the bigotry, the cruelty, the greed, the gluttony, the war, the waste, the poverty, the pollution, the Holocaust? We can't. But I do know on this flight through life, we also can't hide our liquid explosives. Even in the smallest quantities, God's going to see them, God's going to scan them, Others are going to react to them. And our physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being will suffer from that self-poisoning. Anne Lamott is a wonderful writer. In, in her book, Traveling Mercies, she wrote, quote, In fact, not forgiving is like drinking rat poison and waiting for the rat to die. That line of thinking goes back to the time of Socrates. That not being able to let go of anger and resentment is like a poison. We think, we think not forgiving will be poisoning the other person. But really, it's poisoning us. You see, our attitude on our journey has got to change. We, we may not say it out loud... We might not say it out loud, but many of us think it. You know, I don't get mad. I get even. Some say, or head. The truth is, we can't board the flight through life unless we remember what forgiving is not. What forgiving is not. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Rather, it's choosing to not actively remember. Forgiveness is not saying to the other party, oh, you're okay. Rather, it's saying, I'm okay, and I'm willing to let God deal with whether you're okay. Forgiveness is not saying, I don't feel the pain anymore. Rather, it's saying, I don't feel the need to hold on to your involvement in my pain anymore. Forgiveness is turning to our loving God and offering ourselves and all our baggage that we're dragging along with us and giving it to God. It's God who forgives. It is the divine forgiveness that pours through us and fills us with a forgiving spirit. And and. We don't have to rebuild a relationship with everyone we've forgiven. Just because we're at peace doesn't mean that they're not still toxic. We've got to depend on God to be our baggage handler. Take our emotional baggage. Send it to a destination where we'll never find it. Finally, one word of advice for us this summer as, and, and, and beyond... When we find ourselves busily packing away plans for revenge, plotting our ways to get even or ahead, savvy travelers often tie a tag on a suitcase or some other clever item, brightly colored item, to quickly identify their bags from others. Wendy and my travel group that for our trip this coming week sent us luggage tags and ribbons to attach to our luggage because all bags look alike and that way they can quickly identify our bags. Can we stick a sticker, a ribbon, on our emotional baggage so that we can quickly identify it and thus deal with it better? The problem is, we travel through life, we give our baggage to God. And ah, when we arrive at our destination, we go straight to baggage and we pick our bags up again. We give it to God and then we take it back. And we give it to God and we take it back. And we wonder why we're running around in circles. Hmm. Can we put something on our baggage that'll quickly identify it, make it Conscious, and then make the conscious choice not to grab it. We see the bag, but we intentionally, we don't, we don't drag it along on our journey. 
we let the professional baggage handler take it for us. Quote, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Jesus. That's Colossians 3.17. Great verse. In the name of Jesus. Everything. Can we stick in the name of Jesus across our emotional baggage? In the name of Jesus. With that identifying our baggage, it might, it might help us have a hands-off approach. Walk with me here. Can we, can we approach our emotional baggage carousel with a hands-off approach? Rather than pick up our bags, can we, in the name of Jesus, not take our bags with us on our journey? With, in the name of Jesus, plastered across our issues, can we really sabotage a despised colleague? Can we honestly swear to get even with the liar or the cheat in the name of Jesus? Can we openly declare our eternal hatred for one who has wronged us in the name of Jesus? Jesus brings out our best self. I've said it before, when dealing with difficult people, don't let them change who you are. If at your core you are loving, you are kind, you are compassionate, don't let misbehaviors of others change you. Be loving, be kind, be compassionate. It's also important to know that, that we don't, don't let ourselves to be abused. But we are to be loving, kind, and compassionate. Sometimes in abusive situations, that means saying no and moving on down the road. If we do that, free from the burden of carrying our baggage, we're going to reach our destination. At the end, the disciples brought healing, wholeness to people. So, do you know of situations in need of healing and wholeness? Do you know of relationships that need to be scanned for forgiveness? I, I don't know exactly where you are, where you've been, or your travel itinerary, what, it, what it's saying, where you're going. But I do know our, our travel will go better without excess baggage. Quote, he ordered them to take nothing for their journey. No bag, no bread, no money. In the name of Jesus, be the palms of Jesus wherever you go. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Jesus left his hometown and went among the village teaching. The author of Mark tells us that, quote, he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two. Jesus told them, don't worry about the things of this world. Instead, he said, if any place will not welcome you, if they refuse to hear you, leave. Shake the dust that's on your feet as a testimony against them. Taylor Swift says it so well, the haters are going to hate, 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 hate. Right? When this happens, what do you do? You shake it off. The 12 disciples did this. They went out, shared the message, and they were successful in their mission. Mark tells us that they cast out many demons, anointed many with oil who were sick, and cured them just as Jesus had done. St. Teresa of Avila, the great 16th century mystic, said, Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Teresa knew that followers of Christ are on a physical presence of Jesus in the world today. As followers, we are the ones housing, feeding, teaching, sharing, and caring in the world. Christ has no body but ours. Independence Day is, in the summer, is the summer holiday commemorating our, the birth of our nation and the ideas on which it was founded. When our country was just newborn, 1776, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams, you might have heard of them, they were appointed on a committee and tasked with designing the great seal of the United States. Six years passed, two committees more chiming in with multiple additions and suggestions. When the final design was approved, adopted, it was 1782. One element of, of the Founding Fathers remained. The words, E pluribus unum, Latin for out of many, one. The phrase works well for our country, and the reverse works well for the church. Out of one, many. We remember that Jesus took and offered the bread in thanksgiving and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus offered the cup in thanksgiving and said, Take, drink, this is the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Come, Holy Spirits, come. Open our eyes to the mystery of new beginnings in these ordinary things, in these our ordinary lives. May they be for us the very essence of the living Christ in our midst. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the body of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All things are ready. As we see Christ in these elements, so may others see Christ in us. In just a moment, you are going to be invited to go to a st communion station near you, partake of the gluten-free, flavor-free, but full of the love of Jesus bread, and partake of the cup. There you will find uh, receptacles for it. You don't have to be a member here or anywhere to participate. All are welcome at the table. 
So, my friends, the table is wide and reaches all people, even where you and I live. Let us come to the table. Please join me on, in our prayer of communion. Blessed are you, O God, for you have set us free from fear. You have come to us in the of light to guide our feet and the journey of life. Through your spirit, may we share love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May the peace of Christ rule in, in our hearts that we may be ambassadors of what we, what we say and what we do. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. 
saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, in thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. I have had the blessing to fly a lot in my days. Seven countries, and we're adding a new country later this week. Wendy and I are going to Ecuador. Now, the airlines have a lot of rules regarding what you can and what you can't take on a plane. And our tour group to the uh, Galapagos Islands has even more rules. Each airline each airline seems to have their own set of rules. Now, Pastor Jim is not the world traveler that I am, and a while back, he and I were set to go on a church trip, and he was confused about what he could and what he couldn't bring. I kept telling him, but he wouldn't listen. Would not listen. Let me tell you, sure enough, we arrive at the gate ready to board the plane, and here's Pastor Jim carrying three dead turkeys. And I said, what are you doing? I told you and I told you with this airline, you're only allowed two carry-on bags. <laughs> Wherever you are on your travels, what does your offering of time, talent, and treasure say? What kind of carry-on bags are you and I toting. Whether we, wherever we travel, down the street or across the globe, it's always better to travel light. And if, and if money is a heavy burden for you, give it to us. We'll carry that burden for you. <laughs> Ushers, would you please come forward and help us? Holy One, wherever we go, help us in the name of Jesus to be the church. Bless these gifts and the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, at the end of this service, down the hall, there'll be a time of cookies and coffee and conversation. And our faith community nurse will be giving blood pressure, too. So, well, maybe we should add that before the sermon. I don't know. But you're welcome to any and all of those, plus all the great fellowship. Now let us receive this benediction. Free from emotional baggage of the past, let us go into the world, showing everyone what it means to be the church. Amen and amen. Let's sing.
Jesus.